Hello students, in this video, we'll investigate the Bessel function of order zero. So Bessel's equation of order zero is a special one, and it looks like this. It looks like x squared y double prime plus x y prime plus x squared y is equal to zero. And so in this equation over here, so this we know over here that the point x equals 0 is a regular singular point. So x equals 0 is a regular singular point. And we know how to handle regular singular points. What we do is we're at y is the sum n goes from 0 to infinity of a n times x to the n plus a constant over here, c. Okay, and then c is going to satisfy some quadratic equation called the initial equation. Okay, so let's figure out what that's going to be. So let's do the derivatives of these things. So clearly the first derivative of this, y prime, is going to be the sum, n goes from 0 to infinity, of a n, and then n plus c, x to the n plus c minus 1. And then y double prime, is going to be the sum n goes from 0 to infinity of a n, and then n plus c, and then n plus c minus 1, and then x to the n plus c minus 2. All right? Good. And so now what can I notice? I can notice that if I multiply the y double prime by x squared, what that's going to do is that's going to put an extra x squared over here, so that negative 2 and that x squared are going to cancel out. And I put an x over here, that puts an extra x over here, and that negative one and that x are going to cancel out. So each of these terms over here starts at n equals 0, and their, their power of x is just n plus c. Okay? Excellent. So now Bessel's equation becomes this. I'm going to put all these terms together. So by putting all these terms together, we're going to get the sum. n goes from 0 to infinity of a n. And then this term over here is going to be a... Well, let's, let's group these two terms. I'm going to have to add this term over here to this term over here. They both have an n plus c, so I'm going to pull out n plus c of n plus c, and then times n plus c minus 1 plus 1. So that's going to be an n plus c, n plus c quantity squared, x to the n plus c. That takes care of my first two derivative terms over here. And I have to add in the sum, n goes from 0 to infinity of what? Of... Um, this expression this expression over here with a with two more exponents on it, right? So it's gonna be an a n x to the n plus c plus two. Okay? This all has to be equal to zero. Okay, so that's the power series method. So now I need to choose c so that this is gonna work out for us. And so the key to this observation is to we're gonna write out the first two terms of this expression, and then we're gonna shift the rest of them, right? So the first two terms are gonna be what? So I plug in n equals zero over here, I'm gonna get an a, I'm gonna get an a zero, a c squared, and then an x to the power c from this first term over here. When I plug in n equals zero over here, what are we gonna get? Well, we're gonna get an a zero, and then x to the n plus c plus two. So there's gonna be, I'm shifting that down by two, so I'm gonna write the next term in this, I'm gonna write the next term in this series, plus, a1, and then c plus 1 quantity squared, okay? Okay. And then x to the n, x to the c plus 1, like so. And then, what can we have? Then we're going to have plus, I'm going to start that sum at 2 now, n goes from 2 to infinity of a n, and then x to the n c squared, x to the n plus c and then plus over here the sum n goes from zero to infinity a n x to the n plus c plus two that all has to be equal to zero so in other words i just wrote the first two terms of my of that first sum over there and i get this now this has to be zero and a a zero and a one should be arbitrary so the only way that this can i can make this work efficiently is if i choose c to be zero so our choice of is going to be c equals zero and if c is equal to 0, that's going to force a1 to be 0. So c is equal to 0 and a1 is equal to 0 is the only way I'm going to be able to ax out these first two terms over here in my expansion. So we're going to plug in c equals 0 henceforth. And so now what this becomes? Now, this is just going to be a an n squared x to the n. And this is going to be an a n 
x to the n plus 2, right? So now, what will this simplify to? This is going to simplify just to a n, n squared, x to the n. And this over here is going to be an a n x to the n plus 2, okay? And what we can do over here is I can start this sum at n equals 2. So if I add 2 to the exponent of your math, I subtract 2 over here. So this sum, I can really write this in the following way. I can write this as the sum n goes from 2 to infinity of a n minus 2. It's still going to start at 0. And then x to the n minus 2, okay? And so now we have a relationship over here because now I can equate these two things over here. And so that tells me that there's a relationship between these a n, a n, times n squared, and these a n minus 2. In fact, with that, I can equate those coefficients to each other now, and those coefficients, I can start this, of course, at, um, now they're sort of perfectly synced, so they both, and both of these start at 2, so it has to be the case that a n, a n times n squared, has to be negative a n minus 2. So that's the recursion relationship for our coefficients over here for the Bessel equation of order 0. And so now, of course, what do we know? I know that if a1 is equal to 0, then a3 is going to be 0, a5 is going to be 0. So the fact that a1 is equal to 0 is going to tell me that a sub 2n plus 1 is going to be equal to 0 because it all relates to a1. So a1 is 0, so all the odd coefficients in this expansion are 0. And then what are the evil ones going to look like? Well, what does this tell me? This tells me that I'm going to say that a sub 2n is equal to negative a 2n minus 2 divided by 2n quantity squared over here, okay? And so now what's the key? How do we, how do we figure out what these coefficients are going to look like? Well, we start writing out a few of them, right? So let's write out a few of them and see what we're going to get. So if I write out a few of these things, what will this tell me? This will tell me, for example, that a2 is negative a0 over that happens when n is equal to 1, so that's going to be a um, 2 times 1 squared. A4 will be negative A2 over, that happens when n is equal to 2, so I have a 2 times 2 quantity squared. A6, A6 is going to be negative A4 over 2 times 3 uh, quantity squared over here, because n is equal to 3. And so now what do we see? If I multiply all these things over here, so the last one is going to be, of course, a n is this. So I have 2, 4, 6, all the way to a to 2 n, and I have a 0, a 2. So if I multiply all of the, if this, if this pattern persists, those are going to be the, all of these things over here are going to be the right-hand side. So these things over here are going to be, I can multiply all of those things over there. And then I can multiply all of these things over here, all the right-hand sides. And then what we get, all those things are going to be equal. Everything's going to cancel out except for the a to the power 2n, right? So we're going to have this. We're going to have a to the 2n is equal to negative 1 to the n, a0, over what we get when we multiply all of these things over here. So I'm going to have a what? I'm going to have a 2 squared, 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 n times. So that's going to be a 2 to the what? To the 2n, because there's 2n of those things. And then I have a 1 squared, a 2 squared, a 3 squared, a 4 squared. That's going to be an n factorial squared. n factorial squared. And there we have it. There's our Bessel equation of order 0. So what we can do now is I can therefore say that this j0, I found the coefficients. j0 of x is the notation for this, is going to be the sum. By choosing the right a0 to sort of make, make all this match, the sum n goes from 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the n over n factorial quantity squared, and then x over 2 to the power 2n. And this is our Bessel function of order 0. This is a Bessel function, Bessel function of order 0. Now, this is only one of the two linearly independent solutions to the Bessel equation of order 0. So I found one linearly independent solution of the one solution of the Bessel function of order 0. Now, I need to construct a second solution to the Bessel function of order 0 that's independent from this. And since I have a repeated root of my initial equation, I know that my next solution, the second, the Bessel function of order 0 that's independent from this is going to involve a logarithm. And we'll see how to compute that second solution that's independent of this j0 in a future video. Thank you very much.